it's good to be here. It is always comforting to speak to Rotary, to see as many familiar faces, uh, and to be welcomed back here. Uh, I'm joined today by my son, Andrew, who was able to come today as my guest. Um, I do enjoy, oh, I do need to ask, answer Stuart's question. Um, Sinnings Park and Zoo, you have been reading for the last six months about Sinnings Park and Zoo. That is Colonial Gardens, the site that was so provocative in the six month debate over the future of local landmark designation. A piece of history. <laughs> All right, it's good to be with you. Uh, 1912, let me first confess that this is tough. It's always tough looking back because out of necessity, when any of us look back, we take with us the anxieties, the issues, the current perceptions that we have. And so when we look at another era, 1912 thereabouts, we are necessarily going to be asking questions, and putting our finger on things that have resonance with our own time. So that makes it challenging. We're talking about an era in which my parents were children, in which perhaps your grandparents and your great-grandparents were in their prime 100 years ago and Louisville. Now, First, let me say that Louisville in 1912 had some things to be very excited and to brag about. We were a city of about a quarter of a million people. We could boast a very active transportation system on multiple levels. For instance, Charlie Kastner tells me that we had seven trunk line railroads that in a 24 hour period working out of two downtown rail depots that we would have somewhere between 70 and 75 trains and that's not counting some 20 or so commuter lines, commuter steam locomotives that went to communities like LaGrange and beyond. In addition to that, we had put the ribbon on with private investment, seven on this side of the river only, seven suburban commuter electric rail lines called the interurban, and that's not even counting the electric commuter lines that crossed two of the railroad bridges and went to New Albany and to, Char and to Charleston and to Clarksville and to Jeffersonville, and there was an electric railroad connection by a fast electric car that went to Indianapolis connecting to Chicago and beyond so we could boast a rail network. In addition to that, cars were coming onto the scene. No one had any idea where we were headed in that regard. In fact, the only census of automobile ownership that I could find was in 1909, three years earlier, and that was Jefferson County and Zone 656 cars. That's how many we had, maybe a few more by 1912. We had two dozen places by 1912 where you could buy an automobile. In addition to that, the, metro, the two house council, that is the general council with an upper house board of aldermen, a lower house, which was the uh, common council, they had passed some speed regulations. The speed regulations that were still in effect a limited car speeds in the Central Business District to 12 miles an hour, an hour and anywhere else you could drive, um, you, you could, you could drive uh, 15 miles an hour, uh, but no faster than that. Now by 1915, we'll kick it up a notch. But nevertheless, um, those were the speed limits. Airplanes were a novelty. Airplanes would come to town as, as basically stunt pilots doing tricks for the audience. Now, we also had things to brag about in downtown. For instance, there were new buildings. The 10-story Henry Watterson, where the Rotary Club will begin holding its regular meetings. In addition to that, just a block up the street, the 16-story high-rise Starks building, the first phase of the Starks building on the site of Old First Christian. 
and the Kentucky Home Life Building was just completed, first phase only. They're on the northeast corner of Fifth and Jefferson, 19 stories tall, and the YMCA headquarters building there at Third and Broadway had just been, there was a lot to brag about. We were moving away, however, from the riverfront the Galt House was in trouble, the Henry Watterson was coming on, but nevertheless we were incrementally moving, uh, inexorably moving away from the waterfront where the steamboat trade as a passenger means was in decline. In addition to that, the Courier Journal had moved in 1912. They had moved from what you might know if you're an old timer as the Will Sales Building. Yeah. Uh, that's there where the uh, uh, Brown and Williamson Tower is now. They had moved a block up the, bill, up the street to the Landmarks Building there at 3rd and Liberty. Oh, I mean 3rd and Green in those days. And so they uh, had moved up the street. In addition to that, the theaters, movie theater silence in those days, they had begun to convert the Majestic Theater, for instance, to silent movies. And there was some new manufacturing coming to town. Ford Motor, Henry Ford, had already, by 1913 at least, opened an assembly operation there at 3rd and Breck and was on his way to a new building near what's now the University of Louisville campus called the Reynolds Building, but that was the 1915 Ford Motor assembly plant. In addition to that, at home, Chores were much, much easier because of the advent of domestic home appliances coming along. Now, industrialization, which had been intense in American life since the 1880s, was generally welcomed as a sign of progress. However, by the era of the early 20th century, the problems of modern industrialization were beginning to show. City populations, teeming city population, were on a dramatic rise, and with it came some abandonment of old neighborhoods and the replacement of the residents of those neighborhoods with dense, all barely inhabitable slums. And so, by 1908, this city had a slum study, a study of inadequate housing. And in addition to that, one of the concerns that industrialization had brought was a concentration of wealth. You know those robber barons, those railroad magnets who had gained control, vertical control of industries one after another, and with local industries in decline as well as they get consumed Businesses and industries get consumed into the national conglomerate. And working conditions throughout the Western industrial world were on decline. And there was the exploitation of child and women labor. Public health issues had also come to the front because of the bad conditions in cities. There were ordinances trying to control the rampant spread of TB with anti-spitting ordinances. And we were going to get a new public hospital, a new general hospital, very, very soon. And you know its major feature? It provided public parking spaces for the, for the, for the physicians out behind the hospital. And that was a radical in, uh, uh, innovation. And city streets nationwide, and I see nothing in the annual police reports to deny this fact, our city streets were mean. For instance, the city directory of 1912 would allow you to find the three madams and their residents, the city directory, the three <laughs> madams that were work that had that had houses of prostitution on Liberty Street, I mean Green Street, between first and second. Can you imagine a city directory? publishing that kind of information in a city that, that was wide open, but take comfort. The annual report of the police chief said that tramps and vagrants have not been allowed to remain in our city. Well, Mr. Police Chief, why would it be then that in that year, ending 1912, 1913, that there were 2,474 arrests for loitering, 10,000, 272 arrests for a combination of drunk and disorderly conduct in various formulations. 
10 arrests for selling cocaine, 16, this is not a joke, for chicken stealing, but more <laughs> tragically, more tragically, and this exists in repetitively in annual police chief reports of arrests, there were 34 arrests for carnal knowledge of an infant. If we wonder about mean streets. And so in addition to that, the concerns about modern industrialization included the whole notion of quality control when it came to the industrialization process. Why else would we need to be looking at the meat packing industry in the early 20th century? And there was a fear that gripped local communities that somehow the, the small community sense of caring and the values of American loss, the, the values of American life were lost. There was an anxiety about a changing American. And get this, within a decade of the founding of your club, for the first time in American life, there would be more city slickers than rural and small town folks, and that created anxiety in America. Politics, they were in the control of the tavern politicians, the ward healers, and the political bosses, all of whom were somehow being manipulated by big money. And so there was a concern for breaking up that kind of control. Election of 1905 in Louisville had literally been to every office holder who was elected was thrown out of office when a reform ticket tried to do something about it, but I promise you it didn't do much good because the Whalen political machine and Mayor Head had returned to office after a brief five years of reform government. And that government was corrupt and the police were literally patronage holders for the political party in power and I don't make, it makes no difference what party you're involved with. They were the Goons are the henchmen for the political party in, in power, and all you have to do is look at the election day of 1905 and to see the cracked skulls that the police levied on those who were part of the political opposition. And so that was part of this concern for modern city life. Monopolies, consolidation, they saw the decline of locally owned companies and the absorption into the big monopolistic controlled companies out somewhere else.